Hey, it's Andrew Huang. I am finally giving you a tour of my new studio. I've been here for six months, but I have upgraded. I used to do all my work in this eight by 10 foot room, and now I am in this nine by 10 foot room. But it's connected to this awesome space, which uh, used to be a factory, but they've converted it to be all live work lofts, which I'm super lucky to be able to be renting in. So the reason it's taking me so long to get around to this tour is that I really wanted to have everything perfectly set up, but I've kind of realized that the studio is like a living, breathing animal. It's always changing and evolving. Also, I had to learn how to levitate a camera with my mind. So now that I've got that on lock, I can show you around. Here is our shooting area. It's Pretty big, but also pretty basic. I just have something that I can hold backdrop paper on up there. We can switch this out for green, white, or black, depending on what a video needs. And then I've got these four soft boxes. These are just super basic ones that I picked up at a camera store. I don't know a whole lot about light. My approach is to just get as much of it as possible and uh, make sure it's all the same temperature. So when I'm not shooting here, this space is actually also my living room. So let me show you how that works. All we need to do is move these lights to the side, push some furniture back in place. It takes less than 10 minutes. And then we have this nice spot to chill. And uh, sometimes I like to do music stuff here. And behind me, you can see the kitchen, which you might recognize from some videos where I have done music stuff there as well. You're watching Carrot Kitchen with Andrew Wong. That's me. This is where I keep a bunch of my stringed instruments and I also have my electronic drum set up. So you've seen me do some music stuff over here. This is a little office area. My wife Essa also works from home here. And this is a giant wall of weird gear that I have accumulated over the years. It's everything that I might need to make the stuff that I make. Uh, it's nice that it's easily accessible. I can just grab whatever I need and go. Uh, across the hall here, we have the bathroom. And I feel like you've also seen me do some music stuff in here. Cold, cold water for you. So I'll bring you upstairs now. There's not too much up here. It's really just the old bedroom. But I have been known to do some music stuff here. We ain't ever getting older. If you feel you're sinking, I will jump. So here is the main event though. It's what most of you want to know about. It's the music room where I produce all my music, where I vlog about music. I just got these sound baffles up on the wall, which is really nice. I need to do a bit more on the ceiling and these other walls, but like I said, this is a constant work in progress. There are two thick Ikea rugs on the floor to help with sound as well. My desk is also from Ikea, and it's nice because I can use it sitting or standing. I suffer from an extreme lack of cable management, which y'all love to point out. I've tried a bunch of different things to try and keep cables in check, but I'm working on so many different types of things that I'm always having to move gear around, so it's just faster for me if if I'm able to plug and unplug stuff as I need it and live within the mess. To help with that though, I paint the ends of plugs with nail polish to make them easier to identify. I monitor through Tenoy 802s. I think they sound super sharp. I've got the Ableton push for when I need drum pads. Native Instruments Complete Control, the 61 key version for any keyboard playing I need to do. I chose this one because it integrates really nicely with the Native Instruments plugins that I use. Sony wireless headphones, model number MDRRF985R. I like wireless headphones because I record myself. So I have my computer over here set up to record and then I walk over to the vocal booth. There are blankets in the corner hung up on curtain tracks. It sounds super dead in there when they're all closed up. I've also got what's called a portable vocal booth made by a company called Real Traps and I stick that up right behind my mic for a little bit of extra sound absorption when I'm singing. The mic that I use on almost all my vocals and instruments is this wonderful Shure SM7B. I really like its pickup pattern. It's very direct and the sound that comes off it I would describe as very plain which is usually what I want because it means I have the most flexibility to sculpt the sounds afterward in post. My audio interface is a Universal Audio Apollo Twin. This thing is built like a tank. It has survived multiple trips around the world with me and the sound quality is fantastic. My main computer is this 2013 MacBook Pro, which in 2017 is still killing the game and I run Ableton on it. So those are the highlights. And since I feel like I could talk about all this stuff forever, I thought I would go on my social media and ask you guys what you wanna know about my studio. If you missed it, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, all those other places for next time. Let's look at some questions. 
Martin Ferdinand asks, how many instruments do you own? Which is a question I get a lot and honestly, I have no idea. I buy and sell stuff all the time. Sometimes companies send me things and sometimes I also just rent things for a day or a week. I think some people have a more instrument focused approach and they might know I have my electric guitar and my acoustic guitar and my ukulele. I look at all these things as just tools to create the songs that I want to create. And that means a lot of different stuff flows in and out of the studio. Ben Rizzio. Rizzio. Ben, do you think the arrangement of your studio space affects your productivity? I think I could answer yes and no to this. Sometimes I can really get into a zone and nothing exists for me outside of what I see on my laptop screen and what I hear in my headphones. And that can happen anywhere, whether it's a plane, a cafe, doesn't matter. At the same time, there's a lot you can do to optimize conditions for inspiration. And for me, that's keeping things very blank. I don't like a lot of loudness or color in my space. I keep my stuff black, white, a little bit of gold just for warmth. I really like this empty, clean feeling, which for me allows my brain to zoom off in all different kinds of directions without feeling hindered or directed by anything. But I'm sure this is different for everybody and you gotta find what works for you. On a more practical level though, workflow is really important and you wanna have the stuff that you're reaching for the most often within arm's reach. You wanna have a home for everything so you always know where every little item is. Your chargers, your batteries, your lenses, your pencils. Robert Robert Steven Taylor asks, why is Ableton Live your DAW of choice? It's been a long time since I've used any other music software, so I'm not sure if this is still the case, but I feel like Ableton offers a lot of really unique features. Clip warping and warp modes, session view where you can launch different loops, really easy automation of every possible parameter, including time signatures and tempo. It's a really fantastic program. I think it's the most powerful thing out there if you learn how to use it. Jacob Alexander asks, from personal experience, would you say that better equipment means better music? or would you say that a producer can make good music with any equipment? I would say yes and yes. Your ideas and the execution of those ideas are always going to be more important than the tools that you use. A lot of amazing work can come out of extremely limited means. I'm actually planning on making some videos where I make music using extremely limited equipment just to show how possible it is. That said, better tools can make things better. They're not magic wands. You still have to learn how to use them. You have to put in the work to make your product good. But great tools mean things are a little more polished, a little shinier, uh, means the workflow is a little smoother, it means you don't have to waste time when something breaks and you have to replace it because it was the cheapest one. So always use what you have, never let a lack of resources get in the way of you creating. But when you can level up, level up. One more question from Kelsey Cueva. How did you go about soundproofing and do you have any DIY soundproofing tips? There's a definite distinction to be made between soundproofing, which would be a space that no sound escapes from and no outside sound can get into, and what we might call sound treatment or acoustical treatment or sound baffling. This room is by no means soundproof. You can sometimes hear sirens outside. You can hear people talking in the other room. There goes some cars right now. Every place I've worked, I have tried to start with somewhere quiet. There's a lot of things that can help with that. It can mean being on a higher floor of a building so that you're far away from the street noise. It can mean being off of a main street. It can mean having a corner unit so that there are fewer neighbors. There is sound from outside that comes in here though, and I'm sure when I'm singing at the top of my lungs, some of that is filtering out into the outside world. So I do think about times of day that work better for me to be doing my thing. As for acoustic treatment, you want to have as little sound reflection, as little echo as possible in your space. And you can dampen that by any means necessary. I've got a mixture of cheap rugs, blankets, pro sound baffling here. When I've been on the road, I've still recorded vocals for albums that I've released in a hotel room with a blanket over my head. Go on Instagram and search hashtag Huang Mobile Studio. I'm seeing a lot of other questions about acoustic treatment and mixing and low budget equipment that I could recommend. I think those are all things I could talk about for a long time, so I might do individual videos for each of those topics. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, and those will be coming in the future. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my workspace. Definitely leave a comment if you have any other questions of things that you want to know about my workflow, about my studio, about my equipment. I'll be happy to answer those in a future video. Thanks so much for watching today. See you next time.